My name is Marie Gardner. I'm a health and hydration coach from Alberta, Canada. Um, originally from Nova Scotia, so I know we have others from Nova Scotia here tonight. I teach people about water. I teach them all about water, about all the different kinds of water, what's in it, how it affects our cellular system, and how we can use water um, to essentially turn back time or slow down our own aging. Now, there's nobody that's going to leave here tonight that is not aging, um, in me included. We are definitely um, not able to stop that, but we can do it more gracefully and we can slow it down if we use um, water as a nutrition. So today we are learning all about water, um, our water and our cell system. Uh, what is aging is number one, because a lot of us don't know what aging is. I didn't. Um, about five years ago or so, I found out the hard way what oxidative stress and, and damage was um, when I got pretty sick. Um, I ended up having uh, digestive problems mm. with IBS and um, IBS and the early stages of colitis. And so I ended up going to a doctor to find out, you know, like why I would cry after I would eat sort of thing. They told me that. And um Hi, everybody. And uh, I ended up doing a deep dive into oxidative stress and damage and figuring out what was the root cause of my problem. Um, and so that's what I'm here to share with everybody. Um, so keep me on track. I did do some slides here. Uh, number one, we are water. Literally, our blood is 93% water. Um, our overall body is, is estimated to be about 73% water. That old joke of being a cucumber with anxiety is pretty close to what is happening. Um, so water is our life force. And I don't think a lot of people pay enough attention to it. So that's what I do is I make people think about water. So what we're gonna learn today, this should be under an hour and that's including the question and answer. Um, if you do have questions as I'm talking today, if you can jot them down at the end, I'll be able to go over all of your questions. And if I don't have the answer, I promise I'll find them. So first thing we'll learn is what is ox or aging, uh, AKA oxidative stress. Uh, what causes it? What are the signs and symptoms? Uh, what illnesses are linked to oxidative stress and damage? Uh, what's the truth about our water? So I'm going to do a little bit of a deep dive into tap water. Maybe we could just mute there because I don't really know how to do it over here. That was Jackie. I know there's a possibility on my uh, side, but the right I'm the there, there is. Yeah. If you just click the top uh, right corner of the box that's talking, you should be able to, as the host, to mute them. Does that make sense? Oh, I see what you mean. Let's so you can okay. quiet people up pretty quick. <laughs> um, okay, we got... There we go. I think we're good. All right, thank you. Le living and learning in the whole Zoom room here. Um, okay, so yeah, I will talk a little bit about water. Uh, Ronnie and I already started a little bit of a conversation there. So I'll go a little bit deeper into that. Then I'm gonna teach you all about anti-aging um, water. So I'm gonna teach you, I'm an advisor and a consultant with the Molecular Hydrogen Institute out of Utah. Um, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about hydrogen um, as a medical gas, and I'm gonna teach you about anti-aging water. And then at the end, we can do a, um, a question answer period. So jot them down. So what is oxidative stress and damage? Essentially, it's just a fancy word for aging that nobody talks about. We're all told that aging, oh, it's just natural. Oh, you can't remember why you walked into a room? Oh, that's just natural. You know, like uh, you're getting sick. Oh, yeah, well, you're at that age, right? Like aging is talked about all the time, but oxidative stress and damage isn't. Um, essentially, I found out the hard way that it's a collection of free radical and reactive oxygen species that causes cellular mutations and DNA damage. So what happens is when your body metabolizes both oxygen and nutrients or food, it actually uses a lot of the, the oxygen and the food as an energy source and leaves behind um, a byproduct that is essentially free radicals. Um, ROS is an unbalanced oxygen molecule. So if we could go I'm back. All finished. Yes, it's all yours. 
Um, I thought I had the next slide. So electrons um, are the, the molecules electrical source. When they are partially used, they lose an electron and that makes them a radical or a free radical. A lot of people probably have- um, Do I just put these back or- uh, I, can, I, can, I can put them back for you. Okay, I just don't, I wanna put them in the right place. You gotta get to Laura here. I know most of them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. We never okay. I, you know. I know there's a mute all button, but I'll find that next time. All right. So um, essentially free radicals, I know you guys have probably heard of it. Um, they're the troublemakers of the, of the cellular system. There's all different sorts of them. The ones that I predominantly focus on is reactive oxygen um, and hydroxyl radicals. So I will focus or I will tell you about that in a minute. So this is an image to kind of show you what it looks like. And again, you can see why I'm the water nerd. Look at that normal cell. That is a beautiful, hydrated, healthy cell. Um, our body needs water and it needs a lot more water than most of us drink. Um, even I'm probably dehydrated. You know, there's only so much water you can drink, but you have to drink the right water as well for your cellular system. Um, but this image here will show you how a free radical ends up being unbalanced and then what the cell looks like with oxidative stress. What is happening a lot with these troublemaker radicals is they go into the cellular system and they'll actually start fights over electrons. They, nature wants to be balanced. And so when you get a free radical, a, a breath of air or a hamburger you ate or whatever, and you've got these free radicals coming through, what's going to happen is they're going to go into the cellular system and they're going to try to steal another electron from a healthy cell. So then what you've got is two electrons actually fight or um, cells actually in a fight over this electron. So the electrons over here, over here, over here, over here. And what's going on right there is those two cells are actually um, really prone to mutation in that in that little argument. Now, somebody wins, they get the electron and they go off and be a healthy cell. Now you still have one free radical, one unbalanced missing an electron cell. And this is what it ends up making is this the oxidative damage as it continues to start fights all over the place. Thanks. And I'm just checking the chat there. So what causes oxidative stress? Unfortunately, breathing. Um, that's why the older we get, the more oxidative stress we get is because the, we live in an oxidative world and even breathing 3% of every breath you take becomes reactive oxygen. Um, now high intensity exercise, any stress you put on your body is also going to cause your oxidative stress to go up. Um, we've also got obesity, smoking, vaping, alcohol, prescription medication, um, some treatments such as cancer treatment, chemo, radiation, that whole thing. Um, we're also are going to go over to tap water, bottled water, pro oxidants, um, toxic chemicals that we use in our home for cleaning um, are also going to come along with this oxidative damage, radiation from our cell phones, um, any physical stress, any mental stress and any trauma is going, that's why you see when a lot of people go through something really traumatic, they almost seem to age, you know, um, in, a, in a short period of time. And what's happening there is rapid aging due to oxidative stress. This is some other ways um, of free radicals or of getting free radicals. And I mean, a lot of us can't really avoid it. Um, the sun, I'm a huge sun baby. I love paddle boarding and hiking and all that sort of thing, but the sun is technically radiation. Um, so now when you see this, um, this symbol here, the OH, that's the, what I'm gonna teach you about. That's a hydroxyl radical. Um, so the sun is creating OH um, as a one oxygen, one hydrogen radical, very close to water, but it's not water. It's actually really dangerous. What an OH will do, it's, it's kind of like a computer virus and it goes into your cellular system and it programs cells to multiply. Now, free radicals uh, and as a general usually program cells to mutate and cause mutations, but the OH causes mutations to multiply. 
So those are my two specialties as far as water and free radical and, and oxidative or radical damage. Um, we also, of course, all have inflammation. Inflammation is caused by oxidative stress, but ironically enough, also causes oxidative stress. It's no wonder we're all aging, right? And then, of course, we live in a very oxidative world as far as pollution and stuff, cities and that sort of thing. When we don't have clean mountain air, um, that's going to give us a little bit of rapid aging as well. And it all ends up speeding in a little bit of rapid aging from all over the place ends up to very quickly um, adding up to a problem where we're aging faster than our years. So here's some signs and symptoms. You guys might identify. I know I did. Like I was... When I started the journey of being the water nerd, I was 41. Now I'm 45 going on 46. Um, and I'll tell you, I feel better than I did when I was 35. Um, I had all of this. So the signs and the symptoms, general aging, fatigue, low energy, you know, memory loss, foggy brain, muscle and joint pain, um, wrinkles, gray hair, uh, your eyesight starts to go, noise sensitivity. That one really surprised me because I was exceptionally noise sensitive. Um, <clears throat> headaches and migraines are almost always linked to oxidative stress and dehydration. So if you or anybody you know suffers with migraines, send them my way and I will show them this replay um, or just talk to them about hydration and, um, and uh, oxidative stress. Yes, that's a good point, Michelle, actually. We can't get away from it. That's the that's the bummer right now is, you know, we can either focus on our problem, which is we live in a really oxidative world, or we figure out a solution, you know, and, and I don't worry, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging um, in the doom and gloom of oxidative stress. I will show you today a solution that I've been using that helps me, but absolutely, even in the mountains, we're getting it. Um, a lowered immune response has been something that has been a hot topic lately, and that is, of course, why the older people have been more affected by recent events. And because oxidative stress, the older you are, the more you have. That's yeah. kind of the rule of thumb. So when symptoms get so bad, we end up at the doctor, just like I did. I had a pain in the stomach for, I don't know, four months. Like, <laughs> I'm not a doctor runner sort of person. So, you know, I just figured I'm just getting older. Like, oh, I'll just, I just won't eat large pizzas anymore. Oh, I just won't eat bread anymore. Oh, I just won't eat dairy anymore. Oh, now I can't eat salad. And that was when I had to go to the doctor. Um, but when symptoms get so bad, we end up with a diagnosis. Um, what are some of the names that they call our symptoms of oxidative stress? So oxidative related illnesses, and I found this as a very, very, um, uh, what's the opposite of deep dive, um, shallow dive into Google. Um, oxidative related illnesses, the list goes on and on, but this is the top, which is cancer, age related cancer is definitely linked to these free radicals and these hydroxyl radicals making mutations and multiplications, you know, uh, heart disease, cardiovascular issues, diabetes type two has very strong roots also in dehydration. Uh, but again, it's the right water, you know, uh, Parkinson's, ALS, MS, depression and anxiety, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome. If any of you have links or friends or have any of these issues, feel free to message me in the group and I can always send you clinical studies and documentation to show you exactly, you know, a little bit more in depth of how this could possibly help you. So there's a, another image um, of oxidative stress. So our water, our, our bodies are made of water. Our brain is something in the range of 87% water. You know that a lot of the times headaches are a complete symptom of dehydration. That a lot of the time are, sometimes I mean it's chronic and, and it might not be as easy as solved with a glass of water, but always try water first. Um, all of our joints and our skin and our kidneys and our blood vessels, our immune system, uh, everything is requires a, an immense amount of water. I drink, I'm about um, 200 
pounds. I don't even know, kgs, no pounds. Um, and I drink at least one gallon, one US gallon or four liters of water every day. And even then I have days like today where it's 31 degrees that I'm going to drink a little extra because I'm using it. You know, I think a lot of us are just really chronically dehydrated. Oops, sorry, I'm going backwards. So what's the truth about our current waters? That's what we all want to know, right? And that's why I'm the water nerd is because I've been studying this for, well, what is it? I guess so over three years that I actually started really thinking about water. And I had the realization that nobody else really thought about water. You know, what was in it? Where did it come from? I started looking at the backs of, of bottles, trying to figure out, well, you know, I just always just thought mm, water and drank it. Um, and then I started actually questioning not only the bottles, um, but also where do they come from? Like this one here is called Liquid Death. Um, this is the, the real Canadian superstore crankery bottle. How do we not imagine that there's microplastic in, in that bottle? Um, so let's go on and see what we, we've learned about bottled water. Um, water is obviously the life source for everything on this planet. I teach my nephew. Um, he's five. He is a mini water nerd. He'll like, we'll go walking. He'll be like, oh, look at that guy. And I'm like, what? And oh, the points out an old dead worm. He's like, that guy didn't get enough water. <laughs> like, no, he, he didn't. Um, but, you know, when you join in on this, this thinking about water, it trickles down into the kids and into your friends and your family. And, and you start, when you start thinking about water, it's pretty easy to have a lot of other people start thinking about water with you. I personally believe that water deserves better. Um, I, I think it deserves more attention. I think it deserves more respect. And I think that each and every one of us that love water need to stand up and, and try to protect it. Something that I hope to do with my business when I'm a big, big business instead of a small business is I want to get more involved in water conservation and water protection um, in Canada and all over the world. So the truth about water, water can either be a pro-oxidant, so we're going back into this oxida oxidative stress. So there's two different things. There's antioxidant, which most of us know we're supposed to have because some guru on Instagram told us that we're supposed to. And then there's what's never talked about, which is a pro-oxidant. So antioxidant versus pro-oxidant. If you zap your tap water with electricity, it is possible to create antioxidant water meaning that it lends electrons to unbalanced radicals. It just has an electron donor. It has extra energy in it. Our current water choices are causing us to age faster because they're pro-oxidants. And our current water choices, unfortunately, have been linked to many serious diseases. Many people think that water is all the same, but it's not. Some of it's really, really good for us. Some of it's really, really bad for, my, for us, and some of it is kind of in that middle ground. So bottled water, my arch nemesis. Um, I do run the hashtag, uh, hashtag stop bottled water. If you're looking for me on any social media, my name's Marie, um, Marie Gardner, and you will probably find me at the hashtag stop bottled water. Um, it's highly oxidative. I wonder if I, I have some tools here and maybe I'll show you guys what this looks like, what an oxidant looks like versus an antioxidant. Um, hey, how about in the comments there, you guys pick, do you want to look at liquid death or do you want to look at the real Canadian superstore natural spring water? And I'm going to check the comments and the first person that answers wins. Oh, I know I'm a wimp, Ronnie. I know it's not even that hot. They want me to move to Texas. I will <laughs> melt, honest to God. Uh, okay, natural spring water. Karen, you got it. Okay, so let's get this set up while we're having a look at this here. So problems with bottled water. Um, they often contain dangerous chemicals. I mean, this water, I can't, and that's one thing that I challenge you guys to look at if you're drinking bottled water is try to find out when it was bottled or when it's good till. Like, is it just good forever? Like 400 years? Or 
or was it bottled 400 years ago? Like there's no, on most of the bottles that I look at, there's no bottle date and there's no expiration date. Some of the water that's um, in these bottles has been in these bottles for 12 to 24 months. Some of the import water has actually been in the bottle for over two years before you drink it. A lot of the times it's just untreated tap water. Um, they disguise it as spring water, but it, that largely is like Hope BC in Canada. Nestle is stealing water from there right now. And it's just tap water. It's the same tap water that the people of Hope get in their tap, but instead they go and they buy Nestle bottles um, that's like literally their tap water. Only now it contains a shocking amount of microplastic. Because that's the thing is these bottles de degrade. Um, again, like you got to listen to that. Like, how is that not going to end up with plastic in this water, right? Um, I'm going to show you for reference. So this is my water, electric water. And this is, uh, yeah. Can everybody see that? You're doing okay there? All right. This is an ORP machine. I'll show it to you once I get it hooked up here. What ORP is, is um, it's, a, it's a tool that for some reason they use to measure pond water. So I got it from a place called American Marina and they use it to measure natural water for oxidizing properties or anti-oxidizing properties. So, Marie, hold on. Yeah. Marie, if you need us to see it, you're really tiny because you're I know, screen I'm not sharing. Sure. Maybe I can just stop. I'll pause the share. That's what I'll do. Okay. And hopefully okay. I can get it back because again, if you need us to know, see what you're do. doing. All right. So let's pause the share and see if I go gigantic. There I am. All right. So I don't know if we're going to get it. Oh, no, we're going to get the right. right. I thought I was going to need to invert it. Okay, so we've got the Great Canadian Superstore Natural Spring Water here and uh, ORP from Great, uh, yeah, American Marina. Exactly, Michelle. So let's have a look at anti-aging water just to give you guys a point of reference. I did pour this quite a while ago. So um, when you see this go to a negative, it means that it's an antioxidant. So ORP, oxidative re um, reactive property. So the negative is an antioxidant property, meaning that again, not to, you know, repeat myself a lot, but just so that you get it, it means that this has extra energy that's going to donate electrons to free radicals and reactive oxygen. So drum roll, please. Looks like we might hit about negative 400 on the anti-aging, antioxidant, same word, water. We go on over. And we have a look at the spring water. Now, when it's a positive, it means it's a positive for oxidation, oxidization, uh, oxidative reduction potential. Thanks, Michelle. You know your stuff. And I know my stuff. I'm just a little nervous, I think. Um, I'm surprised this isn't going higher. I found one bottle of water. Ah, oh, what, what was it? The Radisson in Edmonton. My mom picked it up. It was in a hotel room. It came in at a 575 positive for oxidization. I nearly slapped it out of my mother's hand. <laughs> um, let's go and have a look at liquid death. Why not? I have, I bought a bunch of these off Amazon and I don't drink them. So we may as well test them. Let's go in. Can I do that? No. Go in and have a look at liquid death and see, see how, uh, how liquid death it, it is. Hold on. Try not to spill water while I'm doing this. So liquid death looks like it is going to go up a little bit higher. I think I might need to clean my ORP, Michelle. But either way, as a positive, what you're looking at is a positive for oxidization. No matter what the number is, it's still, it's going to cause us our, our um, free radical damage. And then we go back into the anti-aging water and we can watch that drop again. Uh, any questions in the chat on that one? Yes, Ronnie, that is such a good point. Um, as far as 
leaving bottles of water out like this in gas stations have it all the time set up in the sun and I, on most of these bottles of water it says do not heat do not freeze because that these bottles are not meant to be reused they are constantly breaking down and uh, when we heat them up in the back of our car or at a gas station or in front of a grocery store um, that causes them to break down we also when when we freeze them you know there's that handy trick that goes around the internet every few months it seems of a, a trick freeze your water bottle put it in your cooler for camping and then as it as it um defrost drink it and that'll always get a rise out of me um do not drink that do not um let's have a look and see what this water looks like on the ph scale so that's the anti-aging water the more purple it is the more hydrogen ph stands for the potential of hydrogen so the higher the ph in electric water the higher the hydrogen now there is fake alkaline water out there that uses baking soda and stuff to do, um, yeah. So those are both natural spring waters. So they're they're kind of alkaline because of mineral, which is fine, but this is a high hydrogen um, water. So we don't wanna lose me here in water chit chat. So I will go back and share my screen again and uh, we'll keep talking about water, but I'm loving the chat you guys. So. I'll keep my eye on it. I'll try not to spill water all over the place. That's my other technical difficulty is dumping water on Zooms. I'll just pop that over there. Ooh, look at that purple water. That's my favorite color beyond, uh, beyond blue, color of water. So PFOS, another thing that is in this. Um, if anybody has heard of PFOS, it's been kind of a hot topic lately. It is uh, petrochemicals and it's the forever chemicals. So they're known carcinogenics. They are more often than not in natural spring water for some reason in carbonated water. So things like Perrier or all those like fancy, not even fancy, but those carbonated flavor waters that people are drinking, uh, that's gonna have a higher concentration of PFOS and PFAS. The problem with PFOS and PFAS are that our body can't detox them. So even for me, um, I used to be a vodka soda girl when I'm in my 30s, and I drank a lot of carbonated water. Even for me, I have this all stuck in my system because I can't detox PFOS. Another thing that you have a hard time detoxing is microplastic. So there's in a Google search, you can kind of get an idea of how much microplastic people are drinking. But um, I think it was a Stanford University um, study that showed two weeks of bottled water like this was it, people were ingesting as much as a credit card size worth of plastic. And the problem with microplastic is our body's not built to identify it or detox it as well. Some of it will get out, but a lot of it will get stuck in our kidneys. And now we're finding microplastic in people's blood, microplastic in placentas, meaning that babies are actually eating microplastic in the womb, um, microplastic throughout our entire systems and in our food and in our natural water. So that's why, again, I'm on this mission to stop bottled waters because if we don't stop now, it's only existed since really the 80s, minus Perrier and their glass bottles in the 70s. Plastic water bottles came out in the 80s. So, I mean, that's less than 40 years. And it has, to an extent, already permeated and destroyed a lot of our planet. So what's another 40 years look like? Another problem with them is they get recalled a lot. Um, it's largely unregulated. The rule, <clears throat> pardon me, the rule with uh, bottled water is my understanding is they have to test once a year. And it's kind of like when we do our taxes and we have to keep it for, we have to keep our tax paperwork for seven years. They have to test their water once a year and they put it into a filing cabinet. 
if and when somebody gets sick or multiple people would have to get sick, that at that point, the FDA will go and, and ask them for the water test, their most recent water test. Now that could have been 12 months ago, well, or 11, because it's once a year, right? Or it could have been 12 weeks ago. Nobody really knows. So it's very much unregulated. They, they buy our tap water for pennies, which is literally our water that we pay for in like taxes and utilities and just being a human with rights to water. They buy it for pennies and sell it for billions, a 4,000 time markup on bottled water. And I'll, going back into Hope BC, it's, it's your tap water. That's all it is. So business trip to Hope BC probably. Um, some of the reasons that tap water has been recall, recalled, not all of them, are things like E. coli, mold, yeast, and even like contaminants. If something gets in, in the factory, um, you can get contaminants uh, that would cause a recall. But again, you have to wait until someone gets sick. And most of us do know people that have gotten sick off bottled water, but they don't go to the FDA, most of us just get better and move on, right? Learn the lesson. Um, when a whole bunch of people get sick, that's when we start seeing recalls. Now, this one's particularly disgusting. Uh, is, does anybody uh, is anybody have Starkey water? Does anyone drink Starkey water? Um, I would love a bottle of this stuff. Um, it has been reported since 2017. This article is from 2020, so they're still going strong. You can find articles from back in 2017 that Starkey is full of arsenic, dangerously high levels of arsenic. And I just have a Canadian's perspective on whole foods, but I'm pretty sure this is a pretty expensive bottle of water. Um, and it is literally dangerous um, with the amount of arsenic that's in it. Uh, research finds that there's more than 24,000 chemicals in bottled water. So that's a really long day on Google, but all of them are pretty much harmful. The ones I've gone over already are probably your worst to watch out for. But we do have BPA and BPA, we I only realized this not too long ago, that BPA free is actually a scam. It's a marketing term. Uh, there's actually 26 bisphenols and BPA is just one of them. There's often 25 other bisphenols in your plastic water bottle, but because they didn't get any media attention, they don't have to be removed. And they couldn't remove all 26 of them or your water bottle would probably fall apart, right? Um, BPF and BPS behave the same way in the body as BPA meaning that they're hormone disruptors. So all of all three of them have been linked to hormonal based cancers like prostate, breast cancer, ovarian cancer. Um, they've also been linked to infertility, low IQ, uh, developmental problems in babies and and um, and and um, young adults. And then oh, Finally, we have distilled. I apologize that I missed well water, Ronnie, but we have gone over it a little bit. But this is distilled or also known as reverse osmosis. Quite honestly, if I had to drink a, a, a drink of water that wasn't electric, I'd probably go to reverse os because there's nothing in it. Uh, there's no minerals, no calcium, no potassium, no magnesium, no sodium. So I would miss those minerals, but there's also none of the other scary stuff. It's not something that you'd want to switch to permanently. I do worry about a generation that's being raised on, on reverse osmosis and, and ultra filtered water because these kids are growing up with no minerals in their water. And I'm not sure how that's going to play out when they get to our age and they start facing bone deficiencies, osteoporosis, that sort of thing. Um, there's another option with the RO that you can remineralize it. Now, there's a problem with that, that water and, and minerals go together and they're attached together when they're, when they're natural. And that makes them more bioavailable. Remineralized water is just like crushing up a, a calcium tablet, like a supplement, and putting it in the water. 
It's not really bioavailable. It's just going to go into your stomach and out the other end. But the problem on its travel from here to there is it actually sig signals to the body to let go of a lot of its stored calcium. So calcium supplements, if anyone here is taking calcium supplements, do some research. I'm not a doctor, so like, don't let me sway you one way or the other. I'm just a nerd that loves to research, um, but do your own research because calcium supplements could be doing the opposite of what you want them to do. Now, the truth about tap water, this is just general municipal tap water, you know, um, it's it's oxidative. My tap water, I can get it to go as high as 475. Um, it is full of chlorine. One thing about chlorine is it's a gut killer. Um, there's a lot of talk online right now about the the um, the gut being the second brain. Well, chlorine is meant to kill bacteria which is great when you don't want beaver fever or whatever kind of diphtheria or whatever else they're killing in our tap water. But when we drink chlorine, what's happening is it's going into our gut flora and wiping out all of our good bacteria. Something a lot of us don't know is our good bacteria, our gut flora actually farts hydrogen. Um, that's one of the byproducts of our gut flora is antioxidants. So our gut flora is our antioxidant production center. If we don't take care of it, we aren't producing enough antioxidants to fight off an oxidative world. Um, fluoride is in a lot of our city, at least in Canada, and I believe in the States as well. They, uh, they put a, in a lot of our city tap water, and it's been very much linked to a few different things, but the wake sleep cycle um, was what I noticed the most. I used to be a desperate insomniac. There was days that I would like not even, I would maybe sleep a half an hour and get up and go to work. Um, and since I've switched, I don't have that anymore. Um, chemically treated tap water, it's also balanced to avoid municipal pipes from rotting. So when we take tap water straight from the tap, it's high in chlorine, but it presents a little bit less than this, a little bit more green at around a 7 pH. What most people don't realize with the neutral tap water is it's actually balanced at the treatment plant to be neutral so that it doesn't rot our pipes. So they use lye um, a lot to do to balance that and to make it slightly alkaline. When you run it through a Brita or a zero filter or whatever you're running it through, you will get a very, very yellow acidic colored water because you've taken out all of the balancing chemicals. Um, so don't let them fool you with additives. That's one thing that we all have to know here when we talk about water. So the good news, you can clean your tap water. That's why I'm not on a war against tap water because I want you guys to drink water. Um, the great news is that you can clean tap water. It's not that hard. That's what I do for a living is teach people how to clean it and then teach people how to zap it with electricity. We I, essentially it's called ERW or electro reduced water um, in the clinical studies, or I nicknamed it electric water because it just makes you feel good. Um, we use a kitchen appliance to do that. So I will show you that at some point, probably not in this, but if there's interest, I will definitely show you guys that at some point. Um, so ERW, so we zap electric or we zap tap water with electricity and we make anti-aging or antioxidant water. That's how I made this. This is the electric water, the one that went up to negative 400 um, as an antioxidant. So we use a kitchen appliance, it's called an ionizer, and it actually uses the process of electrodialysis. A lot of people don't realize, I didn't, that electrodialysis was discovered in the late 1800s by the same guy, Michael Faraday, um, that created the Faraday cages in the airplanes so that if the airplane got hit by lightning, you wouldn't all fry. Um, so same guy, he discovered electrodialysis water by shocking water with electricity and watching it separate into positive and negatively charged water. And then doing some final research on what one to drink. <laughs> so we drink the negatively charged water. Um, if anybody's into grounding or any of the spiritual work, NASA recently did some studies on why people feel so good when they ground or they walk barefoot on, on the earth.
And the conclusion of that study was because of negative or negative charged ion. And that's the same as ion that's in the water is a negative charge, which is again, why people feel so good. Um, it's also known as hydrogen water. If you are looking to do some research, I would skip first page of Google and go right into scholar.google.com. If you, whenever you want to do research on anything you find here on Revel, if you go to scholar.google.com, you'll go directly into clinical research and clinical studies, and you'll skip all the blogs and the opinion based and the marketing, right? And you'll go right into the clinical. Um, it doesn't contain chlorine, sulfite, nitrates, which are um, um, fertilizers from runoff, farmers' fields and stuff, and any other substances that you just really don't want in your water. It's also known as anti-aging, again, because it lends those electrons to the, to the free radicals um, and stops the chain reaction. Because remember, when I was talking about the free radical, they fight. There's always, if you're missing an electron, you're missing an electron. Unless you have a donor, you're always going to have at least one free radical going around starting fights. As soon as we add in electron donors, we can lend electrons to the troublemaker and no longer a troublemaker. Um, this does con contain active molecular hydrogen. With this water, fresh is always best. The fresher you can drink it, the more hydrogen you're going to get in. Hydrogen is made in our gut flora, so it's not foreign to our body. Um, it is very natural and a lot of us aren't making enough. So it's nice to be able to supplement. It is a micro clustered water. Now in, in cellular terms, micro clustering, it's like, it says it's, a cell has what's called an aquaporin. It's like this little tiny door on a cell and it opens up and one water molecule goes through and then closes and then opens up one, one at a time in the cell. That doesn't mean that microcluster isn't viable for not being sloshy when you drink a gallon of water every day. You don't want to feel like a, you know, a, a water bag. It'll, it, it'll absorb into your system really quickly. It just won't absorb into the cell any quicker. But it's a lot easier to eat a small bowl of grapes than it is a large bowl of grapes, especially after you, you have to do it at one at one, one at a time, right? Um, this water also contains ionized trace minerals. You might even be buying those at your local health food store. They're kind of a new hot topic. You can get it in water and skip the heavy price tag at the health food store. Um, ionized minerals are more bioavailable because they have an electrical charge and our cells talk electricity just like your water nerd. So all of these um, ionized calcium, ionized pot potassium, magnesium, even sodium, which we need, all of that is in your good water. And it all is, is working with your cellular system on an even more electrical basis. Um, and then antioxidant water can definitely help your body fight oxidative stress, the, what you already have. And it'll also essentially change your future because you won't be gathering as much oxidative stress as some other 45-year-old or however old you are. So this is a little demonstration of what I've been doing with my hands here. But what we've got here, we've got an antioxidant. So it has a ton of electrons. This is just a normal cell. And it's got the eight electrons, but this one's missing one right here, the unpaired electron, right? Because they all have a little buddy in this whole thing. This guy's got no friends. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the electron or the antioxidant is going to transfer an electron here and create a healthy cell out of a free radical. So electro-reduced water um, does in include extra hydrogen gas. If you do want to look that up in PubMed or NCBI, I can always give you some links or just head on over to scholar.google.com. Look up molecular hydrogen or active molecular hydrogen. Uh, during electrodialysis, essentially what's happening is the electricity is blowing apart the water molecule. So you know how it's H2O. So we've got one, um, uh, one oxygen, two hydrogen making up a, a, a water molecule. So when we shock it with electricity, it blows everything apart and it all gets separated. And a lot of the hydrogen gas from the hydrogen molecule goes into our drinking water. Um, it's 
actually the lightest and the smallest element on the periodic table of elements. That's why it's number one. Um, it's also kind of low key a deity for me, um, but it can bypass the mitochondria and the blood brain barrier. Uh, it's been shown in multiple studies to actually repair DNA damage um, and mutations and protect the DNA as well. It's essential for life and it's produced in our gut flora. So most people don't make enough hydrogen and they need to supplement. There was a study done in 2017 of, oh, I believe it was 600 people. Um, I can pull up the study at some point if you need it. They, they came to the conclusion that 85% of the people were making under two liters of hydrogen a day. The healthy amount or what we're supposed to make is 10 liters. So guaranteed, probably none of us sitting here have a fully functioning gut flora that's making enough antioxidants to fight our oxidative world. So uh, just a couple of snippets of the studies that you'll find on PubMed. Um, right now, I think there's over 3,500 animal and human studies. Uh, and it's helping people lose weight. It's helping balance glucose. It's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, again, you can get that on PubMed and NCBI. Um, people that have switched to electric water have lost an average of 12 pounds. That study was done three times and had the same results um, with an average of 12, 12 pounds in three months. So it's definitely anti-inflammatory as well. So what are the benefits of hydrogen gas in anti-aging water? So um, a lot of this is personal experience and you can always, I don't know, probably Google it too. But for me, it ended up being increased energy levels. I don't really nap anymore. I used to, I literally, I was in the car business and I used to work fairly long hours. I have literally more than once <laughs> napped in my car. I was getting that, I, I couldn't eat. My digestive system was terrible. I couldn't even have anything to eat. So no wonder I was tired. And I had such low energy levels that I would end up sleeping in my car, sleeping after work. I had literally no social life at that point because I couldn't stay awake. Um, you have faster recovery, workout recovery. So if you do like to work out, if you are one of the, the healthy-minded people that are doing intense workouts, Say goodbye to leg day. Um, you're gonna heal faster. There's actually a lot of a lot of professional athletes that use electric water uh, just because of that alone. A lot of UFC people, the ultimate fighting champion, the Lakers, Tom Brady, and whatever team he's on, they're all on it. Um, a ton of Olympic like swimmers are usually pretty good to to have electric water. I know I've seen it in gymnastics as well. Uh, just for that workout recovery. Uh, you'll also in, in find that yourself drop in a few pounds. You'll have better memory, a better mood. You'll have a clearer mind. You'll have better joint health. You won't crack when you stand up anymore. Um, you'll have improved mental health. I found anxiety and depression. And I have found even in clinical research, well, in research of clinical data, that it is very much linked to dehydration. Um, so I find as soon as I start to get a little bit of a cranky water nerd thing going on, I get some water into me and it helps, um, an improved immune system and just an overall feeling of good health. I can't stress enough. Like I'm not, I'm not joshing you here. I feel better at 45 than I did at 35, 100. 100%. And I feel 200% better than I did at 41 because I used to cry on the couch a lot. So definitely made a big difference in my life. And that's why I want to help other women that are kind of just like me, right? Um, and see if I can help others. So there's a, my favorite image of H2O and our healthy man there. And just the concepts to remember. Um, as a recap, Oxidative stress is aging. It's just another fancy word for it that I wish doctors and nurses and health practitioners would talk more about. Um, water can either be a pro-oxidant or an antioxidant. Electricity and water do mix. Um, a lot of people don't think that that's a good idea. And I do not think you should follow the YouTube guy that's making electric water in a Tupperware container. You definitely want, if you want more information, come to me and, and I will show you exactly how to do this. Um, but don't do it yourself. Risk of shock. Um, ERW is electro reduced water. That's the scientific name. Um, and this is affordable. It's available and it should be in every home.
Um, everyone deserves clean, healthy water. And honest to God, you guys, when you have something like this in your home, a kitchen appliance like this, nobody leaves my house without water. I don't go anywhere without it. My, my brother, my nephew, my aunt, uh, all my friends are all on this water because you can just give it away. Who, who leaves the, you know, Thanksgiving dinner with uh, a case of Nestle, you know? Um, Okay, so I'm just going to catch up here because I see Carol. Hard water. A lot of people, oh, how am I turn this off? A lot of people have hard water. Like 80% of North America has what's considered hard water. People and a lot of marketing people made us think that hard water was terrible. It's not. Hard water is actually literally loaded with minerals. Um, calcium. Um, yeah, Michelle, don't get me on Nestle. I'm on hard water right now, but I can blow up. Um, so hard water is calcium, potassium, magnesium, and sodium. And that's why it makes the, the film on our bottles. It is a good thing to have that much mineral content in your water. Absolutely drink hard water. Do not drink softened water. I know a lot of people have been told that they can drink soft water like that they make with a water softener. That is an absorbent amount of, of sodium. It's going to cause a ton of water retention and a ton of inflammation. Don't drink soft water. If you've got hard water, absolutely you can zap it. Um, I'm actually on groundwater. I live in a really small town. So we have 10 different wells around town and my water is, is hard water. So I have a pre-filter set up in front of the ionizer where I pre-filter out some of it just so that it doesn't stick to everything because it's kind of a mess. Um, and I actually need I need um, minerals in my origin water to create electric water. You can't zap um, RO, like dead water with no minerals. You need calcium in order to get the water separation. When you zap the water with, with electricity, it separates into two different waters, the drinking water and the cleaning water. And if you don't have any minerals, you won't be able to do that. Softening with potassium is a much better option, Heather, for sure. Um, and you can zap potassium softened water. Soft water also damages the environment. Uh, I did not know. I guess it would really like, you know, people use salt to kill the weeds in their driveway. So 100%, it definitely would. I've never really thought about that. Oh God, Gina and Mona, I'm loving that. Do you mind putting that in our chat, in our group chat there? I definitely want to read the book Quench. Nestle is insane. I actually went viral on TikTok, like uh, talk about, you know, older people using TikTok. I went viral because I exposed Nestle uh, in, a, in a few different videos, just asking Google. I asked Google at one point, how many babies did Nestle kill? And she answered me uh, 1.5 a year for an average of eight years. Nestle is brutal. I know people that have been boycotting Nestle for um, since the 80s, since that all happened in Africa. But the problem is, is not all Nestle products have Nestle slapped on them. And now Nestle is turning into, they just sold out to this blue Triton, which is like the epitome of like big, dark, evil corporation. And they're buying up all the water that Nestle owns and they're buying up all the water. Like these guys are going to be, it's not even Nestle. That's going to be the ones to put all of our water in, in plastic crunchy bottles. It's going to be blue Triton, mark my words. And if we don't stop it, then we're going to end up um, only having that as an option. And our kids and our grandkids and future generations are not um, going to have clean water. Alkaline water produced with an RO system and then run through a mineral cartridge. Um, I am not too sure about that. Um, you can't really produce ERW, which is known in some circles as alkaline water. Um, it is alkaline, but it's alkaline because it has high hydrogen, so pH, potential of hydrogen, um, but it's not your fake alkaline water where it has like five different salts and sodium bicarbonate and all these different additives. Um, you can't make ERW with OR, with a reverse OS system. 
unless you possibly could get some separation if you add, if you remineralize. Um, but I would take the reverse osmosis system off and uh, just go with a pre-filter on your tap water and, and do that. Um, that would be what I would suggest, but we'd have to kind of get into it. Um, Okay, uh, Carol, I don't want to break any Revel uh, rules. I think there's rules here and I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, but I was warned that that these are just information sessions. But if you want to connect with me, I will put my phone number. I'm pretty easy to get in touch with. I'll put my phone number and my email in our group chat there. And then you can, um, you can we can have a talk about that. But I promise you, my system, my... my um, Water ionizer costs less than my cell phone and my cell phone's not even new. So don't think I've got like a fancy one. It's like an old cell phone. Um, I pay 98 bucks a month. So it's well worth it. Um, it's definitely, definitely worth it. But how to produce ERW at home. Uh, we use what's called a water ionizer. I'm going to do, Judy, this is for you. I'm going to do... Um, another another talk about that where I actually show you guys how this all works or if you just want to reach out to me I can do it one-on-one -on -one with you and show you it's just a kitchen appliance it matches my fridge and it matches my stove well it used to until I moved um but it's just a kitchen appliance yeah I blame my whole stomach problem on reverse os and bottled water because I was in the car business and I was super stressed out all the time. Um, I was a marketing executive in the car biz for Chrysler and everybody's problem was my problem. So I was always stressed out, but I was always traveling to different dealerships. And I used to drink reverse Oz because that's what was in the coolers and bottled water. And I'm pretty sure that's what landed me in the pickle that I was in. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like I'm, I'm totally up to connecting personally I'm not a big pitchy person anyway I am the water nerd oh where's my there's isn't he cute um so I'm not really great at pitching most times I just explain stuff and people are like yeah I want that and I'm like oh okay good perfect because <laughs> I get awkward with pitching um I do have a website um I've got a couple set up uh my first is probably zapyourtapwater.com but there's also a good talk about bottled water at stopbottledwater.com. But I'm definitely more of a per people person. I find the website, the one website that I do have at zapyourtapwater.com is like convoluted. There's so much information that you just like get overwhelmed. Even I get overwhelmed. I know all the information that you're just like, ah, oh, never mind. I'll just die. <laughs> um, so if you just want to talk to me, feel free. I'll leave my phone number and my contact information. Again, you guys can um, find me at either hashtag stop bottled water. That's probably the best one or hashtag zap your tap. But I'm Marie Gardner and I'm everywhere. I'm Marie the water nerd on TikTok too, if you're looking for me.